things that God has done in her life and impacted her. She's married, amen, to our worship leader, to our gang leader. And she has a, a son, Noah, and he's going to be 10 months old, amen. So uh, right now, I'd like to welcome to you my leader, my role model, Tamara Guevara, amen. Give her a hand, amen. Amen. If we could all go ahead and stand. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to speak and to be in God's presence. Um, I don't take it lightly. This um, past year, I've been serving God for eight years. And I'm, I'm thankful that I got saved when I was 18. And I've been saved ever since then. I've been in love with God. You know, I've been serving God and he's been faithful to me. He's given me an awesome husband, uh, a son. I mean, I'm blessed. I, I count myself blessed and I'm privileged to be up here. I'm thankful to God for just for me. I'm, I'm just a willing vessel and I just want to be used by God and whatever it is he wants to use me. I just want to be that yes and just say yes to God. And I'm just thankful uh, for this time that I'm able to speak I thank my parents, my pastors, for giving me this uh, privilege and this opportunity, and my husband, and everyone that's a part of the gang team. I'm very thankful. And I'm going to go ahead and open up in a scripture, but before I do that, I'm going to open up in a word of prayer. Father God, I come before you right now, Lord, and I just pray, God, that you would just remove me aside. God, calm my spirit, Lord. I pray that you would use me, God. I pray that you just take full control, God, and I pray you give us the full understanding, God, of how you want us to be, God, to reverence you in everything that we do. In your name we pray, amen. And the title of, um, of my uh, message is Having a Reverent Fear of God. And, um, it's Jeremiah 5.22, and it says, it says, should you not fear me, declares the Lord. Should you not tremble in my presence? I made the sand a boundary for the sea, an everlasting barrier it cannot cross. The waves may roll, but they cannot prevail. They may roar, but they cannot cross it. And I'm going to read it again in the New Living Translation. It says, have you no respect for me? Why don't you tremble in my presence? The Message Bible says, why don't you honor me? Why aren't you in awe before me? And you can go ahead and be seated. And, you know, that scripture is deep. Like, when I read it, I had to ask myself that question. I couldn't just read it without, you know, just going through it and just like, oh, that's a good scripture. But I had to really question and ask myself, do I honor God? Do I, am I pleasing to him? Do I tremble in his presence? And I know it sounds kind of weird, like, you know, what do you mean tremble in his presence? I have to be scared, shaking. But are we in awe before him? Are we, you know, humble before him? Reverence is a respect. It's holding a person in high honor. And I'm going to use an example. And I'm, I'm going to talk about a child. Every child is to reverence their father, correct? You have a father. And it talks about it in the Bible. Honor your father and your mother. And I'm going to use my example because my, my testimony and just me, for example, because I, I saw myself so, I understood it so clear when I was like, okay, when I was young with my dad, I was, you know, probably six or seven. And I remember when I would get in trouble, and I'm sure you guys can relate to that, you would, you would, you know, fear your father. You would fear just, you know, getting in trouble and knowing you did something wrong. And it was like, man, why did I do that? You, you feel so bad. You're like, what could I do? How could I tell him I'm sorry so that I don't get spanked? But it's, of course, we can't get out of it. We already made the mistake, so we just have to own up to it. But, you know, at the moment, you fear him. And you fear him so much because you disrespected him. But like I'm saying for myself, I honored my father. I didn't want to do anything to get in trouble. And I tried to be, you know, good and do everything to respect my father. And as I got a little older, I was, you know, my teen years. And I started to wander off. I started to stray away and think that I can do what I wanted to do and think that I can get away with things. And he wouldn't know. And, of course, he didn't at times. But I was never a good liar, nor was I good at hiding things. So he always found out. But, but, for, but me saying all that, you know, um, as I got older, like I said, I, 
I started disrespecting him and I lost that reverence that I had for him. And that same thing, the same way we lose our reverence for God. Well, we call God the father, you know, we call him our father, right? We call him God's our father. Well, we then, we have to respect him. And it says in first Peter 1 17, it says you call out to God for help and he helps. He's a good father that way, but don't forget. He also, he's also a responsible father and won't let you get by with sloppy living. And it, my question to you is, have you lost your reverence for God? And I know that some of you are like, well, no, I, I reverence God. I honor him. I come to church. I serve him. I love him. But do you really reverence him? We have to ask ourselves, you know, we call, like I said, we call him our father. We must live it. We must, you know, show him that he is our father. We must respect him. We must honor him, like I said. Not just say we honor him, but genuinely mean it from our heart. You know, genuinely. Because we could say we honor him, but our actions are going to show. Everything that we do, our attitude, our character, it's going to come out. Do we really reverence him? And another example I'm going to give you, and, I'm gonna, and I give examples just because I want you to be, a, be transparent. I want you to understand what I'm saying. I want you to grasp it because... If you don't, then me saying all this means nothing. And I want you to understand exactly what I'm saying. And the next example um, is you buy, you buy a furn new furniture or a car. And you once, like when you first bought it, you, you didn't let anyone eat in your car, correct? You, you bought it, it was brand new, you washed it all the time, every time you got paid. You know, you got those new couches at rent center and you don't let anybody sit on them or eat on them. But then time goes on and you begin to get a little sloppy and you're like, oh yeah, go ahead. Or you let someone eat on your couches and you begin to have stains. Your new car, you have stains because you let your kids eat McDonald's on the way to church. You know, you stop caring and your car begins to look dirty. Your couches begin to look dirty. Well, you become sloppy with it. You don't care no more. Something you once valued, you lose that. You lose that value. You valued it at one point and now it's like, oh, I don't care. It's just my car. Or you looked at your car like, I'm so thankful God gave me this car. But then time goes on and it's like, I hate my car. It's all messed up, but it gets you where you got to go, right? So regardless, it's still your car and you have to be thankful. And um, one quote that I, I heard, and it was from D David Wilkerson, and he said, if we don't have the fear of God, we invent a gospel of convenience. And when I'm going into, my, into the next one, um, like I said, the thing you valued, you once valued, and you, t you take for granted now. And it goes into your salvation. That's what it all boils down to, because our salvation is what we should value. You know, I was, I was listening to a sermon and I had been listening to sermons on reverence and just getting it in my spirit. But I, before I, you know, come up here and speak anytime, you know, I always ask God, speak to me, you know, show me what you want me to speak on. But before I, I know that God, and I'm not the only person when I come up here where God speaks to me first before he, I know he's going to give me something. And I was listening and God just started showing me things in my life. And, you know, I'm guilty of it too. So I'm not going to point anyone out and, you know, say it's all you. Because I had to examine my heart. I had to ask God, is there, you know, maybe I lost that reverence for you. Or the way I, w I felt for you in the very beginning, eight years ago, when I, you know, realized that I needed you. Do I still feel that same compassion? Do I still feel that same passion for you, that love for you, that respect? And we have to examine our hearts. It's a dangerous place to be there. When once we lose our fear, the fear of God, we lose our passion, like I said. And when we lose our passion, the first thing we want to do is cheat on God with the world. And we have to really look at our, examine our hearts. Because if we really, really love God, and we really want to serve God, if anything, when we're going through something, when we're wanting to leave, or when we're, you know, just going through things, personal things, It'll only draw us to God, not from God. And if we really, you know, are genuinely serving God and we really have a genuine relationship with God, we're, we're not going to do that. We're not going to even think of going to the world. That's not even going to cross our mind because we're so sold out and committed to God that we, you know, we're 
we're scared to leave God because we know where we're headed. You know, if we leave God, we know we're headed for destruction. And that's the fear of God that we need to have. The fear that we know no matter what I may go through, I'm going to serve God no matter what because there people, other people have it worse. You know, we come here and we can be ungrateful young people sometimes. We could think, you know, we don't need this. We don't, you know, I go to church and, or even some of us leaders, I'm, I'm guilty. You know, I've been there. I've been safe for a while. I've been up. I've been through it all. There was times where I got bitter. There was times where I felt hurt and angry and I didn't want to serve God no more. And I was playing the blame game, blaming everybody but myself. And we have to own up to our own responsibilities. If there's things in our heart, we need to ask God to deal with our hearts, to take things that are out of our lives because there's no way we can fear him. Once we lose fear, we lose everything. And, you know, we can't be deceived by our own knowledge. We can't be deceived by our own know-how. You know, fools are, are people that are deceived. It talks about in the Bible, a fool. It says fool, I don't know how many times I was reading, but, you know, it says right here, the wise fear the Lord and shun evil, but a fool is hot head and yet feels secure. And, the new, uh, and then it, another one says, fools think their own way is right, but the wise listen to others. And, you know, we cannot be foolish. We cannot, you know, be set in our own ways and think we know it all and we know what's best for ourselves. Because if we don't listen to the voice of God, if we're not at, you know, the feet of God and praying, you know, we could say, well, yeah, you can be here right now saying, yeah, I'm listening to you, but are you really listening? Or are you just hearing what's coming out of my mouth? Because when we listen, we apply it. We put it inside of us and we learn and we're like, okay, I need to change. Not just someone that just hears it and it's just coming in, but you leave and you're still the same. You still think the same. That's not listening. We, you know, we don't, we don't, no more than God, like I said. And when, we, when I say, you're, who are you fooling? We are fooling ourselves. We're not fooling anybody but ourselves. And I'm going to close in a scripture. And it says, 2 Corinthians 7.1. It says, because we have these promises, dear friend, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that can defile our body or spirit. And let us work toward toward complete holiness because we fear God. Now I'm going to read that again. Because we have these promises, dear friend, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that can defile our body and spirit. And let us work toward the complete holiness because we fear God. And we, like I said, you know, if we have lost that reverence, we need to ask ourselves, ask, you know, examine our hearts like I said because sometimes we become familiar we become familiar with the whole church and being here and we come here and we you know at one point we used to come to church and we used to be like I said passionate you couldn't wait to make that altar call you couldn't wait to be in God's presence you couldn't wait to hear the message and, and hear what God has for you but then you know time goes on and we begin to our heart becomes numb towards God we don't want to be here we're like man how long is the sermon when can I get out of here it's like you don't you're not hearing anything that's going through but because we're so caught up in our own know-how and what we think that we are we don't hear the voice of God when he's trying to speak to us and we become familiar like I said we become comfortable and we have to examine our hearts and examine ourselves and ask ourselves God you know check me if anything inside of me is not of you because we are all guilty of getting like that whether you may not now you may in a few months but this message right here may be the message that you may come across later and you're going to remember and God is going to speak to you maybe not today but later you may be going through something and you're going to need this and you're going to remember and you're going to know this is what what I need to do. I've lost the fear of God. I know what I need to do to get back there. And we really need to examine ourselves. Amen. And I'm going to um, go ahead and close in a word of prayer. God, I uh, come before you, Lord, and I just pray. I thank you, Jesus, for this word you've given us, Lord. I pray that you would help us to apply it, God, and that you would deal with our hearts, God. You know the things that are inside of us, God, that even things we may not see, Lord, I pray that you begin to reveal things to us, God, that let us not be people, God, that are selfish. Let us examine our hearts and change, God, what we need to change, and let us reverence you, God. Let us have that fear that we once had before if we have lost it Lord I pray that you would just seal this word into our hearts God and we thank you in Jesus name amen God bless you